So all those discussion about the emotional EMF in the last question, to tie it back into Faraday's law, we make this arrangement with this U-shaped kind of channel, so that with the rod we can make a loop. So you can see a loop happening here. Once we have a loop, we can use Faraday's law and understand everything in terms of the Faraday's law. Essentially, what we're doing here. Remember how we talk about there's a delta V here or an EMF. So we're this is act, sort of acting like a battery. So in fact, we're going to have a basic circuit where we have a battery. Uh, I guess we can find out which direction it is in a second. Like that simple circuit. So given a delta V, given a R, we can work out the amount of current that's in it. And this also brings in the fact that we'll use. Ohm's law to get the actual current because we're just working out the quote unquote EMF or voltage in Faraday's law. Faraday's law itself looks pretty compact, but there's lots of parts to it as as you have no doubt noticed already. Uh, first, we're going to do just the magnitude again. We'll work out the direction using Lenz's law at the very end. Since it is got to the, I guess we'll call that Y. Call that x because x changes over time, where v is equal to dx dt. That's important. We'll you see in a second because here the magnetic field is not changing, right? db dt is equal to zero, and the orientation isn't changing. But we do have an increasing area as time goes on. That's what changes the flux and therefore creates the EMF, which in turn creates the current. Here we. Simply have one simple loop, so that can go away. And again, step by step to find the change in flux, we gotta first find what the flux is. The magnetic flux is the integral of that, where my magnetic field is always parallel to the normal vector of my loop. Might be positive or negative. Again, we're just working with magnitudes here. And that it's uniform, so that comes out. So it's simply b times a. Cool. Where a is given by whatever that y times x is. In this case, I'm breaking that up because only in one direction does it change, and this is where it matters. Because as soon as we try to take the time derivative of that expression, we have to ask ourselves what changes in time. Well, b doesn't change in time. And why this this width here that doesn't change in time, and dy dx is the only thing, and it's the horizontal size of the loop that changes with time dx dt, which we talked about as my v. So then the size of this EMF is then given by the size of which is drop those negative sign b times y times your speed. Aha! Well, that looks just like your emotional EMF thing. There's the connection. You can always use Faraday's law to work out this kind of stuff anyhow, and that of course equal to I times R. So then, if you just want the current, you take these numbers and you divide by R. If you want proper numbers to so sub in 0.75 Tesla times 0.04 meters. That's the vertical length times three meters per second, all over five ohms. Give you a certain amount of amps. 0.018, so 18 milliamps. Another demonstration of Faraday's law, and also to tie in the fact that Faraday's law gives us a potential difference or a change in voltage. So we can always use IR to get my current in a simple resistive circuit, or if the whole loop itself has a certain amount of resistance. To get the direction, of course, we again draw the before and the after picture. So in the after picture, this thing has moved along, and we are enclosing now not just these six dots, but maybe ten more. So we have more coming out. So the B induced counteracts that, and we have to point inwards. So to have a magnetic field. Going inwards, using the right-hand rule, we know that the current must go clockwise. Therefore, the potential must have been opposite to how I've drawn it. 
in order to drive that current clockwise. So this would be the positive end, that would be the negative end.